Hi, I'm James Brundage with Start Automating, and today I'm going to talk to you about some parsing tricks in PowerShell. There's a function we've been walking through, and it's get protocol, and it's based off of a well-known Windows file. This file has the list of well-known ports and protocols, so I can create a nice searchable grid view and a nice list of objects. And this video actually covers a lot of the meat, how I parse that list and turn it into objects. The file was nice enough to give a format at the top, but I can notice that the white space is the most important thing. Now, I believe strongly uh, in trying to avoid regex parsing when you don't need it, and I believe this for a couple reasons. One is that uh, not everyone is bound to understand regex, uh, and two is uh, the old joke and adage, if you try to solve a problem with regex, you have two problems. So I am using a couple of PowerShell techniques here that can actually get to about the same level of performance as regex by going through this in one pass. And those techniques are multiple assignment and the way it handles list operators. So multiple assignment is the first one. With multiple assignment, you can actually take a list of items and assign any number of them, in, in them into any number of variables and the remainder into a variable. And we are faced with this problem here. We have two items that we know are going to exist, and two items that might or might not exist. The thing separating them is a space, and by using the string split, and using string split options remove empty entries, all I'm left with is non-white space. The first of them is reliably service name, the next is port and protocol, and the next is aliases and comments. And while I'm using this trick to parse a data file, there's no reason you can't use similar trickery to parse the output from an exe. We're probably going to want to get the port and protocol number separated, and that's easy to do again with multiple assignment because we've got one variable. We can go ahead and use the split operator and get a port number and protocol name. And then down here, what we do is we take the aliases and comments, which is the remainder, and we use the list tricks that we talked about in the last video to make this work. In PowerShell, if you have a list of items and you use an operator, the operator will give you back all the items that match the list. Unfortunately, because there are lines like the first line where aliases and comments would be completely null, it would be evaluating that on one item, which would give me back true or false. So what I do here is I force them into a list with the at parentheses operator, and then I use dash not like and dash like to only find the ones that are comments. As we notice, comments are delineated with a hash mark over here. Then I build the property bag out of them, and the property bag is a simple little thing to do. All I do is I use new object, PS object, and a hash table. Hash tables in PowerShell are at bracket, name equals value, name equals value, name equals value, and you'll see them all over the place. And in this case, by using them with new object, PS object, dash property, I can create a little quick object. I might want to actually have that object have nice formatting, so I'm going to add one more thing for the PowerShell engine, and that's this, where I'm going to give it a type name. And I'm going to go ahead and get, give that the name of network.protocol, and then I'm going to output the result. And with this, my begin block is done. I've actually gone ahead and assigned protocols equal to the value of this for each. By the way, I'm using for each statement here, not for each object, because it's also, also a lot faster. In the same sort of way as we talked about the performance benefits that you can see using operators over where, you can see a lot of performance benefits by using the for each object over the for each statement. I hope this helps, and we're going to continue with our exploration in the next video.